Another edition of First Person this week, sponsored as always by the Crystal Room in Troy. Call 552-7680. Talk to Jessica Brown. Events perfected, their motto for any event, large or small, give them a call at I-75 and Route 55 across from the Kroger Plaza on West Market Street. Call the Crystal Room, sponsors of First Person. Our guest this week is uh, a gentleman that I have not had the opportunity to sit down with or talk football much with, but he is the head coach of the very successful Tip City Red Devils, and I know it's Tippecanoe. Somebody will call me about that, <laughs> uh, uh, Joel. So that's out of the way, but Joel Dirk is our uh, guest this week and uh, on the heels of an outstanding first round playoff win uh, Friday night against Pickwell. I congratulate you on that. Thank you. And um, it's just a it's just a great story what you've been able to do here, uh, taking over for Charlie Burbacher after all those years in your first year. I want you to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, Charlie's a great friend of mine and, and a guy I really respect. Um, I'm happy to take over the program of what he's built here for 26 years. And, um, you know, our offense and defense is very similar to what he had. Uh, going on here and our kids have responded to it very well and we've been just able to keep it rolling and the kids have been working hard and, and um, you know we finished the league our, our last CBC um, season in the CBC with a, a CBC title so our seniors are very happy about that. You know the one thing that struck me about when you took the job last uh, summer, spring, and I know uh, Joe Neves came down and did a story with you in July and you said I'm not going to change anything. Why should we change because we've been very successful. That says an awful lot. One, it says something about Charlie's regime all those years, and it says something about you because whether it's out of respect for him, respect for the wing T offense, respect for the 50 defense, or whatever it is that you're playing, you know a lot of guys would not come in as a young coach and do that. You know, they want to put their stamp on the program right away, and uh, you know, you haven't done that. Yeah, we, we've kept things very similar um, to not only the team meals and things like that, but the offense and defense. The summer schedule is very similar, and um, but we do have our, some nuances, and we do run the no huddle offense now, um, which has put some um, stress on some of the defenses we played, and and we do a couple different packages on defense. But for the most part, you know what's been successful here for 26 years is 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 what we do. I mentioned the win that you had um, over Pick on Friday, which. It, it raised a lot of eyebrows, mm -hmm. including my own, because I didn't think that that would happen. And in fact, on our picks page on Friday, and I've heard about that plenty already, mm -hmm. about the, you took tip lately, you didn't really, you didn't really give them their just due. But the fact that you're no huddle offense, Bill Neese came out and said, you know, those those guys do what they do well, and they they put our backs to the wall. Yeah, it was a weird weird football game. Um, we had 33 total offensive plays, so they're 80, mm -hmm. and. We needed that no huddle offense there at the end of the first half on a two-minute drill, and we needed it to start the second half fast. Uh, we were able to, um, I believe, score you know 14 unanswered points there at the end of the half and in the beginning of the second half, which really helped us out, and, and then we were able to make some big plays on defense and special teams. If you look at the stats, it was like, wow, how did we win that football game? Because they had close to 400 yards of total offense, but. Field position, turnovers, and things like that really helped us out. The fact of the matter is I've seen tip football for so many years when Charlie was here. I've seen you lose games in that exact same fashion. I think back to a game with St. Mary's a few years ago and a couple other uh, situations over the years. And, uh, you know, there's more than one way to mm -hmm. win a football game. Uh, that's just the, the mere fact. Joel Durg is our guest this week on First Person. And one thing that I want to ask you is, uh, this is a day of a differing and a changing culture of football, and for that matter, a changing culture of athletics and competition with kids. I want you to take a moment and, and talk a little bit about the dynamic change. Charlie's been here so many different years, all those years, a, a completely different personality mm -hmm. than what you are, and, and talk a little bit about the dynamic that you brought and how you sat down with your kids and said, look, I'm not Coach Burbacher, but this is how I'm going to be. Yeah, I, I think it starts with there's more than one way to skin a cat for sure. Um, like I said, the, what Charlie did here isn't wrong. And, and I, I try to be more on a personal level with those kids, just being the age gap and things like that. Um, we do some things um, mentor group-wise where we get to know the kids a little bit better as a, as a staff. We spend maybe 10 minutes with them every day rather than just asking them football questions. We ask them about their lives and things like that. And I think it starts with we have great families here in Tippecanoe, 
that, that raise good kids. And, and when, when Friday night happens and, and, and we have word of the weeks and things like that, it's able to, it's able to show our, our word of the week Friday night this last week was toughness. And our kids showed a lot of toughness. Yeah, they did. Uh, giving up 400 yards is, is tough. And, and we have, like I said, we have great families, and the kids were tough, and, and they just overcame that adversity. We'd seen that adversity. Indian Lake and, and Shawnee, you know, those both those games were losing a half, and one we let slip away, and one we one we captured. But we were able to really play tough, and and this week we're going to be all about discipline. We're going to try to be a disciplined football team, and, and and do our best. You got Trotwood this week in round two of the playoffs, and that game will be played at uh, Wayne High School. We'll be there covering that game on Press Pros. I'm not going to ask you about Trotwood. I don't want to talk about Trotwood at this point because uh, you're not going to tell me a lot, and I would understand that. Besides, but I do want to talk to you a little bit about your transition into the Greater Western Ohio Conference starting next year. For years and years, uh, I know Charlie said, yeah, I just didn't feel like that he could play night in and night out with the likes of Troy and Pickwood and Sydney and, and Trotwood and people like that. Now you're going to get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, and the irony of that, by the way, is you've played Greenville for years. You used to play Butler. Uh, on a on a regular basis, so you you are accustomed to playing schools of that size, but will that be a difficult transition for you to maintain the culture of football as it is here in Tip City? Yeah, I think it's going to be difficult. Um, it's going to be something our kids need to realize that you know there's going to be times where they have to play all four quarters. There's times in our league this year where we didn't play our starters in the fourth quarter, and that matters because week after week after week after week. You guys, some guys are going to get banged up. There's definitely going to be some injuries. And um, just playing, being the smallest school in the GWAC North is going to be difficult for us because, you know, when we, when we looked at Pickwa's, Pickwa's team, they only had two guys that went both ways, or we had six or seven. So all those things you have to evaluate week to week. You know, is the no huddle going to be good this week because we got so many guys going both ways? Do we want to speed tempo up? Do we want to slow it down? All those things you have to evaluate week to week, and and, and is G Walk North is definitely going to be um, something that um, we got to be ready for. Our off-season program is going to have to change a little bit, um, and our guys are going to have to be in very good shape. Let me ask you this: Will that be an incentive to get more kids to play football in Tip, or do you think it may be a discouragement? I mean, is the new challenge, and certainly you're going to get a different type of respect. Mm -hmm. And more respect in the G-Walk than maybe what you would have in the CBC. Yeah, I don't know if we'll get more or less kids. I think Tip State has been a, a school district that's had about 20, 25 freshmen every year, and we hope to keep many of those kids around as yep. they go through the program. Um, I think we'll roughly have around 70 kids like, like we usually do. And ho hopefully it's a – it's a, and every kid's got an individual decision, but I hope we can get more kids out for sure. You know – Charlie Burbacher has gone 9-1, and 10-0 and for years and years and years, and you've been part of that because you were on his staff here. But I want you to talk a little bit about the feeling that you had Friday night because you had your own 9-1 and season champion this year in your league, and yet you did something that uh, has been a, a frustration here over the years to come out and not only win a playoff game in that first round game, but to knock off someone as respected as Pickle. And tell me what that personally meant to you when you got home, <laughs> kicked your feet up, yeah. got a glass of milk or whatever it is you drink after the game, <laughs> and sat there and, and reconsidered the night. Yeah, personally, it felt really good. You know, I've been here for three years, and um, we, we've won four playoff games in these three years. And um, I, I obviously don't want to take that. Uh, it's not all about me. It's about the yeah. great kids we've sure. had in this community. And, um, you know, our, our seniors have won. They won two games as sophomores, one game as a junior, and then and one game as a senior as well. So, um, you know, hopefully we can keep it rolling and win five or six for the, this class. Um, but certainly proud of these kids and, and what they've accomplished. I'm going to give you an opportunity. You can't see it on camera. You want to say anything about the Greenan connection? <laughs> well, I was a, I was, I was a Greenan Knight. Um, that's where I went to school, and uh, that's where I went to high school. I coached there for five years, um, and uh, just a great community. I love the community. They're struggling a little bit in football lately with numbers and things like that. But uh, you know, I was a part of uh, a program there, 05, 06, and 07 as a player, where we won three league titles. And then uh, I coached there for four or five years and uh, came over here excited about the opportunity to coach the wing tee in the 50 with Charlie. And when uh, I walked in, you were impressed when the first thing I mentioned was Bill Smith. Bill Smith's a great guy. He's my basketball coach. <laughs> um, I understand he's an assistant back over there and Scott Smith's the head basketball coach. So um, 
I know they're going to do some great things with their flex offense and their, their matchup zone. I defense. know a little bit of something about Green and history. There you Green go. That's good. History. Joel Durk, our guest this week, and congratulations Thanks again. So Best of luck to you, and we look forward to, to seeing you again this Friday and throughout uh, the future. Your future. I don't know if you'll be here 30 years like Charlie was, <laughs> but I'd like to find out myself firsthand. Absolutely. All right, man. That wraps up this week's edition of First Person. Again, brought to you by the Crystal Room in Troy. Call Jessica Brown and her staff at 552-7680. Events perfected, large and small. You'll enjoy the amenities, the staff, and the convenience of their location right here in the center of Miami County. For Coach Sturg, for the sponsors, and for those people who read press pros every week, we thank you for your support of high school sports here on PressProsMagazine.com. Until next time, thanks. See you then on another edition of First Person.